Senator from Oklahoma. Thank you. No, I was, uh, we have a couple, certainly the occupier of the chair is fully aware of it, having served on the committee uh, that has worked on this legislation. And I have to say one thing about uh, the stuff that we crank out of our Environment and Public Works Committee, it's been pretty pretty significant. I mean, you know, we had the, uh, the FAST Act, the first highway reauthorization bill in, what, 18 years, I guess, 17 years, major one. Then we did the chemical bill. That was great. Now we're going to do the, um, the WERDA bill. And one of the things that's interesting about it, here, hold this one up for a second, is that just look at, the, uh, look at the number of ports that we're talking about. And I've often prided ourselves in, in Tulsa as being the most inland port. However, it could at one time when uh, the first word of bill came out, and I was there when that happened, we were to have a word of bill, Water Resources and Development Act, every two years. Then we started slipping. And during the last eight years prior to our coming back into uh, a majority, well, we really didn't, uh, didn't address this. So this puts us back into our schedule of doing it every two years. And these are reforms that can't wait longer. Uh, secondly, we have been reminded several times recently of the need for uh, core projects. We saw the algae wash up on the beaches in Florida this summer, the project that will fix Lake Okeechobee and prevent this problem in the future is in the WERDA bill, the WERDA uh, 2016. I don't like uh, Everglades projects generally. In fact, I can remember it wasn't that many years ago I was the only one voting against the Everglades Restoration Act. However, and let's keep in mind at that time there was not a chief's report on it. And now that uh, I've been, now that there is, we have something very significant that does affect that. The, uh, this chart shows the algae plume in the uh, St. Lucie, Florida. This is a picture of the algae blooms. Uh, that uh, caused by deteriorating water conditions. Not only are these uh, blooms environmentally hazardous, but they're also economically debilitating to the communities living along South Florida's working coastline. Uh, communities along the coast depend on fresh, uh, clean, fresh water flows to drive the tourism, but as these blooms spread along the coast, economic development is negatively impacted. If we don't uh, authorize the Central Everglades Planning Project, those communities will cease to exist. We also saw historic flooding in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Uh, there are two ongoing core projects that could have prevented much of the damage that we saw last month. A word of 2016 directs the Corps to expedite the completion of these projects. Uh, this chart here is the, the Baton Rouge, Louisiana flooding uh, we can no longer use a fix-as-it-fails approach to American flood uh, protection. Uh, it's not about economic thing, but it's, it's about loss of human lives. We're talking about human lives, not acting as, as is just not an option. Last year, we were, uh, there were several collisions in the Houston Ship Channel because of the design deficiency, the channel is too narrow, and the Coast Guard has declared it to be precautionary, a precautionary zone. This, uh, this chart shows the Houston, the, the Houston ship channel collision from 2015. Now, without this bill, the Navigation Safety Project to correct this issue won't move forward. The Corps of Engineers projects help, <coughs> projects help generate $109 billion in net annual economic development and generate $32 billion in uh, revenue for the United States Treasury. Now, few understand the economic benefits associated with, with WERDA. As I noted yesterday, expansion of the Panama Canal is complete, now allowing the larger, I think they call them the post Panama uh, uh, boats. Now, and look at the comparison between the two. This is what can be used today. This is uh, what is, is, the, is happening now. So the, this chart, the, the pre and the post Panamax ships, um, by not passing this bill, many important deepening projects of our nations uh, will go unfunded, making it difficult for them to accommodate new uh, uh, Panamax shipping vessels. Uh, one that I pointed out yesterday was in was Charleston, Charleston, South Carolina. They have a 45-foot uh, channel. 
Uh, with this bill, we now are going to be projecting forth to get to the 50 to 51 foot channel range that's necessary for this ship right here to be able to come in. Now, the alternative to that is they have to go out in the, in the uh, uh, somewhere in the Caribbean and break down these loads so they come in on smaller ships. That increases the cost dramatically, and we're not going to let that happen. So the uh, the investments in drinking water and and, uh, and other investments are important, but just don't forget the fact that we can use our ports right now that we can't use when the big ships start rolling in. The uh, investments in drinking water and wastewater infrastructure, uh, both public health and our economy, I mentioned that in my state of Oklahoma, this is really significant. You get, you get the states where they are uh, not, not wealthy states, where primarily rural areas, uh, and, and we, the, the unfunded mandates that come in are just unbearable. Now, I'd say from experience, I used to be mayor of a major city for a number of years in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and at that time, our biggest problem was unfunded mandates, and that's what we're suffering from today, and we can pretty much correct that uh, with this, uh, uh, with the changes we're making in our, in our word of bill. A recently studied by the Water Environment Federation shows that, as this chart shows, uh, chart seven, for every million dollars of federal spending on drinking water and clean water infrastructure, we get 2.95 million in economic output for the U.S. economy. And due to the, the ripple effect through the economy, these investments will result in new federal tax revenues nearly equal to infrastructure uh, investments. This is why we need to pass the word of bill now, and we have it uh, in front of us today. It uh, is, a, is a bill that will help protect America's working people and has major economic benefits. So the path forward, the main reason I want to come back down, I, this is the second time that we've, we've made this, it's not a mandate. It's just that the managers of the committee of this bill, that's myself and Senator Boxer from California and the leadership, we all agree that in order to finally get people to get their amendments down, we put a deadline. It's going to be noon tomorrow. So uh, we just ask that you get your amendments down this afternoon. It, th we're talking about amendments now to the manager's package. So it w we will not be able to consider those in our package. That doesn't mean we're shutting them off, because next week we'll have the opportunity uh, to present some. But if you want to really get, have them seriously considered, they need to be in our uh, package. This should come to no surprise, as our committee has solicited any and all amendments in July prior to the August recess in preparation for, for consideration in September. And again, last week, when the Inhofe Boxer substitute to uh, S2848 uh, was circulated, our office stands ready to assist in any technical capacity in answering questions. And I have to say that Senator Boxer and I have worked very closely together. There are a lot of amendments that have come up and have been discussed. Some have been accepted. Uh, others are being considered. Some are popular with Democrats and not Republicans, and the reverse is true, too. So this is our opportunity to do it. So if, uh, if members are unable to make this noon deadline tomorrow for our manager's pa uh, package, we'll still work to ensure that all amendments receive equal consideration as we work to clear uh, as many amendments as possible and work to move amendments in regular order prior to the amendment filing deadline for the underlying bill this next week. So we have the opportunity to do this. We are, uh, we are we're operating on deadlines now. It's been my experience in the Senate that until you have a deadline where you have to do it, people, generally speaking, find other things to do. Well, we're going to try. We're going to hold your feet to the fire this time. Let's try to get this through. I see that uh, Senator Boxer, let me just comment on how, you know, I, not just this bill, but we've worked on so many bills that are very meaningful to the American people. We, you know, I can remember when they said on our side that well, we're not going to have a, a five-year massive highway reauthorization bill. And, but, and yet, I try to explain to my conservative friends that that is the conservative approach, because the only alternative to that is you have to have extensions. If you have extensions, that doesn't work at all. Now, uh, we have worked very well together with that, and of course, we, our chemical bill we're able to do, and now we're getting going to get, get this done. We're going to get it done next week. So what I'd like to do is yield to uh, Senator Boxer and then retake the floor 
for the motions that will be necessary.